So you just landed in Naples, Italy, and you're trying to decide which ancient Roman city to visit, Herculaneum or Pompeii. We visited both of these cities and we've got you covered. We have the pros and the cons and the surprises of visiting each one of these cities. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned to the end to decide which one is best for your trip. And by the way, like and subscribe down below while you're at it for many more travel videos, including videos of archeological sites just like these two. So let's start with an overview of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Both are UNESCO World Heritage Sites and they're ancient Roman towns that were decimated by the same event, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Both of these sites require ticketed entry. So for Herculaneum, it costs 13 euros to start and Pompeii costs 18 euros. And I'll link both of the sites down below so that you can get the up-to-date ticketing information. Both sites are extraordinary and they will give you a glimpse into the ancient Roman world. You'll feel like you've stepped back into time. Both have Roman bathhouses and exquisitely painted frescoes on the walls. So now let's talk about the differences. Pompeii is more well-known than Herculaneum and receives many more tourists per year, 3.5 million tourists versus Herculaneum's 300,000. Pompeii also has many more sites. It includes a forum, an amphitheater designed to hold 20,000 people, and most notably, it includes the preserved empty forms of humans and animals in the positions where they were last seen when the eruption hit. So it's quite remarkable to see these bodies as if you were right there. When the eruption hit, the town was completely covered in pumice stone and everything was buried, including the people. When they excavated the area, they noticed these large cavities in the ground and decided to cover it with plaster and inject plaster into the ground and it revealed the form of a human body. And you can see it in agony in its very last moments on earth, taking their last breaths, which is a very chilling, eerie reality of what the eruption was like. So it really brings it to life, seeing the actual people in their human form. And that's what's really unique about Pompeii. You can actually see these plaster casts on display. The bathhouses here in Pompeii were also extraordinary. They included heating areas and furnaces. One of the most memorable sites was the Stabian baths with the vaulted ceilings. Now, Herculaneum on the other side is better if you have less time. It can take about an hour, up to three hours to visit Herculaneum. There's also a museum on site, which is great too, because you can even see a preserved boat. Herculaneum is closer to Mount Vesuvius, about 20 miles away. When the eruption hit, there was an upper layer of porous stone called tuff that didn't allow any oxygen to come through. So you can actually see the preservation of organics, including wood. You can see wooden doors, wooden boats. They even had carbonized bread that revealed a storefront of a bakery in town. It's quite amazing to see the wood of a door about 2000 years old. So this is a bed. They have these little rooms for sleeping. Herculaneum is also thought to be the more luxurious town compared to Pompeii. And we can see that in evidence at some of the artifacts found in the museum. There were lots of jewelry and symbols of wealth. Mm. The gold. Mm. So this is a staircase and they used to allow tourists to go upstairs. And the first references to Christianity were found here. They found a cross and they also found furniture for kneeling. And our guide said that the early Christians were likely slaves. Another thing that we liked about Herculaneum is that it's more compact and smaller rather than Pompeii, which is quite spread out. Another interesting fact about Herculaneum is that there are very few human remains found at this site. So it's presumed that the wider population escaped the eruption of the volcano. From their postures, we could see that they probably died instantly. One of the most famous skeletons here is the ring lady. You can see the rings on her skeletal hand clutching her gems. Since Herculaneum is closer to Mount Vesuvius, there was a wall of hot air and ash called pyroclastic flow that traveled 450 miles per hour. It essentially boiled people alive instantly. Now, if you do go to these two sites, we recommend you visit in either December or January because there's hardly anyone there. If you wait until the summer months, you'll see that there's quite a bit of crowds in both of these locations. 
Of course, you can visit both sites in the same day as they're only 17 miles apart from one another, so long as it's not archaeology overload. By visiting both of these sites, you really get a well-rounded picture of what life was like in ancient Roman times. And especially in Herculaneum, you get to see elements of that extravagant wealthy lifestyle. So in summary, which one should you visit? Well, if you like archaeology, you'll love to visit both of them. And you should definitely try to do that on your trip. But if you can only visit one, if you don't have much time and you want less walking, try Herculaneum. But if you have at least like a half day to spend and you want to dive into the different sites, including the amphitheater, the forum, the bathhouses, the brothel, and see those eerie plaster casts, Pompeii. And you'll have bragging rights to all of your archaeology lovers out there. And we hope that you enjoyed this video and be sure to like and subscribe for many more travel videos.